Hello everyone, my name is Roberto and today I'll be your narrator for today's presentation. Today I'll be talking about a parasitic worm called Tania saginata. So many of you may be wondering, what is it? It's a parasitic tapeworm from, that comes from the class Satoda, genus Tania, and species T. saginata, T standing for Tania. Tania saginata is also known as the beef tapeworm. As well as its location, the distribution of this world is everywhere, meaning that it is worldwide. So the intermediate host for this worm is cows, and then the definitive host are humans. So many of you may be wondering, how do we get it? So first things first, it, it occurs when animals drink contaminated water or eat contaminated food with eggs in the feces. These eggs go inside of the cow or some animal. And then when humans actually come in contact and they eat undercooked beef or contaminated water, then humans actually contract the worm. And these worms live in the intestines of some animals, such as cows or humans. The worm is flat and it is segmented. So now I'll be explaining the life cycle of this parasitic worm. So first things first, either the eggs or the gravid prolog and feces are passed into the environment. Once it's in the environment, latent, cattle can be grazing and become infected when they ingest vegetation contaminated by eggs or gravid prolactitids. Once inside, once these eggs are inside of the cow, they become oncospheres which hatch penetrate intestinal wall and circulate to musculature, mus muscle tissue. So once these oncospheres develop into sister C in muscles, they're an infective, meaning that when humans kill a cow and then they consume this cow with their sister sissy, humans infected, by ingesting raw or undercooked infected meat. So once this sister sissy is inside humans, it becomes pretty much a fully adult inside the intestines of humans. And then the T. saginata, this, the scolex, which is the head of the worm, attaches to an intestines, which it absorbs the nutrients from our intestines. This worm does not have a true digestive system or mouth. Rather, it sucks the nutrients out. So once you have the worm inside of you, you may experience some symptoms such as nausea, weakness, diarrhea, abdominal pain, hunger or loss of appetite, fatigue, weight loss, and vitamin and mineral deficiencies. And these are common because if you think about it, the worms inside of your intestines instill in all your nutrients from your food so you're not absorbing as much as you could. And even sometimes there are no sy symptoms, meaning that you're asymptomatic, except for, you know, segments of worms possibly moving in bowel movements in your intestines. The adult morphology of this worm is that it can grow up to five to 10 meters and in some special cases up to 20 meters long. This worm has an unarmed scolex, meaning that its head contains no hooks and then as for the segments, it has a mature proglobulated 
and a gravid prolognathids. Prolognathids are pretty much the segments of its body where it contains a uterus and testes and these worms produce asexually. So once you have this worm and you go to the doctor, they diagnose you simply by finding eggs in your feces, the stool sample, or the occasional blood test, the test, you know, when you have vitamin deficiency. Prevention. So a simple way to prevent from getting this beef tapeworm is this to cook your meat all the way through or just avoid beef in general. And if it happens to be in contaminated water, just make sure that you wash your hands before and after with soap and just be hygienic. So examples of getting this beef tapeworm is if you go to like a Korean barbecue or a hot pot where you actually have to cook your own meat, make sure that you cook it thoroughly, make sure it's not red so you don't get the beef tapeworm. And this concludes my presentation. Thank you for your time.